or stuff. That, that, that's where that comes into play, I think. It's like all of a sudden, wow, that was, that was a brutal situation. And that's you know? why we really want to encourage communication between players. I mean, really, it's the safest way to have the best stories in the game. And really, word of mouth is the best advertisement, right? I don't know how many times, if I don't know how many guys in here play this genre of game, but I bet you if you play it, I could ask every single one of you the best moment you had, and you light up and tell me about it. Like, it's insane. I mean, like, guys that I've run into, just because they were speaking to me, humanized themselves. And, you know, at some point, even when I found out that they planned to kill me or something because I heard their buddy in Ventrilo talking through their own microphone because he actually left it on, um, I still felt horrible smashing him in the back of the head with a gardening hoe. But, like, I don't know. That's, it's definitely something that we want to encourage is communication, teamwork, and it'll create even more of a kind of an ethics problem when uh, you do possibly have to kill that guy. <laughs> Oh, hi, my name is David Staden. Um, my first question is, is uh, ah, sorry. Uh, first question is, is um, how will you be able to like, let's say if you're a new player in the game, um, what's stopping other players from just like, you know, just coming from the back and just taking you out? Like, will you guys have some kind of system in check, or they're just gonna have to learn? It's a simple system. One? It's called it's called sink or swim. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. Eventually, you learn how to swim. And then you can sink other people. All right, That's nice. right. I mean, realistically, uh, our systems are one of our biggest goals of this game. I mean, we talked about performance, obviously fun, but we want to make sure that the systems are easy to understand. Maybe your objectives aren't simple to accomplish, but the systems that are involved are easy to deal with. So we hope our hope is that you get in the game, you understand, oh, crap, I'm hungry, <laughs> it's dark, I don't know where I am, that thing looks scary, let's go this way, and kind of work your way into the game. We want to make sure that we're not going to overcrowd things to where you're constantly getting killed as a new player. I think over the course of your first five deaths, you quickly learn the basics of survival. Mm -hmm. It's like you quickly learn, I need to find food, I know how to get food, I need to make a fire, I know how to make a fire. Then after that, it becomes this little system that you've developed. You're like, yeah, okay, bam, 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 I can do that. Now I'm good. And then you're off to the next spot. You're like, okay, how can I handle 20 zombies at one time? <laughs> you know, and, you, and you kind of grow yourself that way. In addition, if the zombies are deadly enough and resources are scarce enough, you actually have to make those sort of trade-off decisions in your head. Is this new player who's not even carrying a can of beans worth wasting ammunition and summoning all the nearby zombies to me. Yeah, I mean, that's actually a really good point. I mean, as far as our, um, you know, zombie acoustics, their visuals, what all they respond to will help that situation much more than we've seen in the past because, I mean, it may even be short-lived. I mean, once again, one of the worst things I would see happening in our game is you find a new player, they're not just gonna kill you instantly. They're gonna say, I need your help. There's too many zombies over there. Run through them and if you survive, I'll give you some food. Right? <laughs> like, so you babe. But that's better than what we've seen in the genre so far, right? It's just as long as the game PvE experience is hard enough, hopefully we encourage helping out new players to have new friends. Okay. Oh, and then uh, my second question is is for like the weapons. Um, for like, let's say guns and stuff, will you be able to customize it? Um, also, will you be able to trade it off or like, can you buy it from a merchant or some kind of. Um, so the things that you'll be finding in our game are found within the world. Um, beyond that, you will be able to craft some things. There's that constant discussion. Uh, Steve George, and I know actually pretty much everyone sitting in this row right now, has been a part of the discussion of what should you be able to craft as a weapon. Like, realistically, can I go find some metal scraps from a car, melt it down, and turn it into a stamped 1911? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I mean, like, realistically, it's, it's more like I found a pipe that fits a, you know. Yeah, hey, I found a pipe that fits a shotgun shell. Yeah. It has a rubber band with a little... Firing pen and bam. Nice. <laughs> that sort of thing. I mean, that, that's that's the goal. That's what we want to push for there. I mean, you're going to find weapons out in the world, um, but yeah. Okay. Um, I'm curious about the environmental factors as well. Like, are you going to have cycles in the game, like daytime, nighttime, weather, seasons, snow? Am I going to freeze to death? Uh, what are we looking at for that? Yeah, daytime, nighttime, mm -hmm. cold, hot. We have uh, eventually wind direction, right? I don't know if it's actually working out, but that's one of our tools. Yeah, that's in part of our letter system. Yeah, for, for scent. Because we want to give zombies uh, benefits and, you know, you know, if it's raining out, maybe they don't, they don't smell you as much. If you're, if you're downwind, maybe they'll catch you a little more. We want to give them those sense, that sensory gameplay mechanic. Yeah, and I mean, as far as raining, we're working on the system right now. I've actually seen it in a game a couple times now. We're still fleshing all that out. But I mean, how that will affect a player will be tuned. We want it to. It's not just going to be something where it's like, oh, this is raining. This sucks because rain. I mean, we stand outside. We don't mind rain. When you're in it, it's a pain in the ass, right? I mean, like, you're soaking, and then it's cold outside. And now you're going to start dealing with issues like, oh, my toe's going to fall off, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, wet socks. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh. 
Right. And uh, I was also watching uh, your stream. People were running around with torches, lighting things, well, other people on fire. Are you going to be able to do that with, like, buildings and stuff, too, or, like, TNT, red barrels or whatever? We've talked about that <laughs> to varying degrees. Um, in my head, wood catches on fire, and if I have fire, I should be able to catch wood on fire. I think there should be a way to counteract that, right? I mean, you yeah. can't just completely break the game with someone around with a torch, because realism's cool and all, and we all get realism, because we, you know, we're alive and people, <laughs> but um, there are some things that may get in the way of fun, so we'll, yeah, we'll I've bumped see. into people before and accidentally caught them on fire. It's like, oh, sorry, dude! <laughs> <laughs> right. or, the, or the AOE fire, when you first put it in trying to make it spread from zombie to zombie, I found it was catching yourself on fire, too. It's like, well, this doesn't work at all, so. Um, so my name is Jeremy, and uh, one of the questions I had was, uh, like you said earlier, you, uh, if you can run through this horde of zombies, and if they start following you, and you help me out, I'll give you some food. Um, would there be some type of trade system where you can, say, team up with someone, and not only will you guys just be going along helping each other out, would you be able to trade off items, say, oh, I need food, or I need ammo, can you give this to me? Yeah, that happens already. I'm traveling with Jimmy, I'm like, dude, I need some water. He throws it on the ground, I pick it up, drink it. You know I mean? It's, it's a very simple system right now, but it, but it works. You know, having an elaborate uh, trading mechanic, I, I don't think it's necessary at, at this point. We, we just want to keep it as, as uh, emergent as possible, right? Sure. I mean, you're going to you're gonna have to drop that food and something shatter your inventory onto the ground. They'll be able to pick it up from there. Um, so you better be in a safe spot while you make that exchange. Right. And, and I think that's important as well because, once again, there are two sides of players, and you know, we hope that most of them are... Uh, good Samaritans. I'm watching Twitch chat right now. I'm about to get laughed at, but um, <laughs> they. Uh, but I mean, in the end, we still want to make sure that the possibility is there that if you, as a new player, finally end up getting the gun you want, and you feel powerful enough, and you're just pissed at the world because they've been messing with you this whole time, and now you're going to go take someone's stuff. We want them to be like, like you hold them up, and then they take their backpack off and put it on the ground, or individual items and that sort of thing. So, and the trade system kind of gets in the way of that. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, one more question. A couple of us were talking about it outside. Um, we were wondering how the respawn process would go, like the system to where, say you die, are you going to just pop back up right away, or is there a wait time, or if there would be a possibility, possibility that some of us thought it would be pretty cool where you die, and then for a certain amount of time or until you die again, you'd become a zombie at one point. You want to cover that one? Well, lots of discussions have been going on regarding that. I mean, currently, we're, we're, every week we're iterating over a new style of respawning and how we should approach it. We're seeing what works best for us, but in the long term, yeah, we'd love to be able to have you play as zombies when you die. There's some there's some technical issues involved with that that we're we're getting over right now, and we don't want to spawn you in the middle of a bunch of zombies right off the bat. So we're we're trying to make it a little more intelligent the way we work that system. All right, thank you. Hi, um, I had a real uh, kind of related to the respawn question and uh, another question as well. I was wondering. Um, when you respawn, does it the game like put you in like a random location every time and like try to make you a certain distance away from like certain threats or are you sometimes just thrown in the middle of things? That, that's what I was saying a few moments ago. So basically, there's going to be this dynamic system which kind of it, it's part of Mitch's. Actually, you can probably get in more detail than me, but there's this heat map that kind of measures where players currently are, and we're going to try to be semi generous to we're going to put try to put you in a location which is. You know, survivable over the first few minutes of the, you know of your play session. So we don't want to just drop you in the middle of a road with 50 zombies and 20 players with sniper rifles on you. That's not cool, right? <laughs> so yeah. you know, yeah. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, uh, R and D going on with that right now, and because it, it's a very delicate subject, and putting somebody out in the middle of nowhere is sometimes not not the best solution either, because then you just run for hours sometimes. You don't find anything, and it. But although it does change your play dynamic, I would. I would say, right? Yeah, no, it definitely does. I mean, depending on where you end up spawning. And I mean, I think that'll always be the case because once yeah. you start learning the, the areas and where you are, you're going to play a little bit differently based off of that. So. Uh, my second question was, uh, I was going to ask, what from you guys like testing and making them play in the game so far, what was like the craziest thing that's happened to you guys personally each in like a play session? I have one Go that ahead. I actually love. We, uh, Paul and I, 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 I get the pleasure of sharing an office with Paul Carrico. He's my, uh, he's our... Our crafting guy. Yep. And uh, after we got walls to work where you can craft walls and you can craft barbed wire, we made this death car wash. It was basically, <laughs> all, all the way down the road, we built this this funnel that kind of went like this and it came back in and then we, we lined it with barbed wire all the way down the center. 
And we sat on the other side with our torches waving to people. La -da -da -da, come on over here. And this Jeep comes hauling butt down the street. It hits a barbed wire, it catches on fire, it blows up. The guys get stuck in the barbed wire and they die. And we're just like, game over, dude. We it shut works. down for the day. Yeah. It's freaking awesome. I don't know. I'm trying to think of mine in particular. Um, between two, uh, my first run in with Ryan, I, it's actually the story of how the infamous, you guys only seen him on camera once now actually, everyone out on the stream, but uh, he's one of our character artists here. He's an individual actually you saw earlier with the backpacks up on the screen for those of you guys on stream. Um, but this is probably the story of how he turned into a murderer in this game. <laughs> he's, he's very much not a, uh, a PvP guy, I don't think, in our game. He plays a lot of other games that way, but I think he really just wanted to help out and be good and have some fun, right? <laughs> and I saw him running across. I honestly thought he's a zombie. I was trying to help him out. I shot him once, said, sorry, yelled at him. Okay, no big deal. Zombies start turning towards me and running at me. He comes running up with melee and goes to kill one, actually shot him in the side of the head, and from that point on, he didn't talk to me. And every play <laughs> test, he became the like KOS guy. Like If he saw you, it didn't matter if you had a gun, he had an ax, he would chase you down. <laughs> like He was just over it. He was totally done dealing with any more of it. So the yeah. switch flipped. Yeah, it's just like done. He just turned into a psycho in game. Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> Scott. I don't know that I have anything crazy that happened. I just uh, a lot of startling moments. You're often by yourself. You think you're safe to use a torch, which is really a beacon to have someone put a hatchet in the back of your head. And sure enough, you turn the corner of the house and there's a hatchet in the back of your head. So. <laughs> That's probably the, those kind of things, or getting run over by the Jeep when you're not looking, that kind of stuff. Probably my main events. One of our uh, play tests, we tweaked the numbers <clears throat> poorly, and uh, pretty much everyone was starving. The, there was very, oh, little, yeah. and very little of anything spawning in the world. And so I was hiding in the bathroom, standing. They had just put in the, the uh, actor for the toilets. I was standing on the toilet with my hatchet. <laughs> if I don't move, I won't run out of stamina. And someone ran around the corner, I'm like, yeah! A can of beans. <laughs> he collected for me, it was nice. Yeah. I think it's about it for those. And actually, here in just a little bit, I want to jump on over to uh, some of the Twitter questions as well. Sure. Is that all right, Ty? Yeah. It looked like you had a purpose when you started walking over here. Oh, for sure. And, um, we're going to talk to Lenny about some of his work. Lenny! All right, very cool. Um, you know what? Actually, let me do this. I'm going to collect a bunch of these from Twitter. It is going insane right now on the hashtag. Uh, I'm going to collect a few of these, and we'll answer those shortly after the, uh, the talk with Lenny. Does that sound good? Are we about ready to tie it up? Yeah, we can start with that. All right, cool. Very, very cool. Once again, guys, I want to thank you for tuning in today so far. We are still on our... Uh, 2.17 p.m. Pacific, so we still got a good while left. We're going to be off here at uh, 9 p.m. I think at 5 we're going to go into like the series, like we're going to rock out with all the devs and Correct. talk about everything. Right now, you're just seeing us, right? This isn't the whole development team, obviously, otherwise nothing would be getting done. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, today I didn't have any weapon stuff to implement, and so thankfully I can be here on stream, and we'll get to see some of the development later on. But uh, we'll see you guys here in just a little bit. Cool, so we are going to check out uh, what one of our artists is working on. And uh, Lenny's cubicle is over here. I'm gonna peek around the corner. You ready, Lenny? Yes. Okay, awesome. You wanna follow? Oh, one second. Hold, please. <laughs> cool. So for those of you just joining us, we are streaming today from SOE uh, San Diego. We are talking about our new game, H1Z1. And um, I'm here with Lenny. Lenny, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm actually a game designer, and I'm in charge of the world environments. And I also get my hands dirty inside you know, of doing NPC AI and the zombie AI, of course. And also itemization around the world, trying to get the, you know, rare spawns, all that fun stuff. So right now, but what I'm doing here I is hold the mic for you, yeah, and then while you like show us around, that'll be great. Okay, what I'm doing here is uh, we have this house that we're calling is the, the governor's mansion, of course, you know, because it's a really big house, and we plan on putting this on an island in, in a lake, and it's going to be a very unique house. It's something that players are going to want to take and make a stronghold out of because it's going to be very valuable location 
on how the map. How are you going to get to this lake? So this, yeah, you got to cross the lake. It's it, the lake is far away from where players will be spawning. So they got to find, you know, obviously travel there first, and then when they finally get there, now they can fortify this. We plan on putting the so ability. This is a house that you can take over. Yes. Yes, it's going to be dangerous as well. You know, it's, it's not just going to be an empty house. You know, zombies are going to have raided this place at some point with after the apocalypse happened. So you're going to have to fight your way in here, and then once you've cleared the place out, then you can take it, and now it's yours. Are there going to be booby traps? Booby traps? Ah, oh, I like that sound. <laughs> that sounds good. Booby traps, you know, I think I'm going to have to put some in there. So uh, tell me a little bit about what the process is for developing a intense mansion like this. It looks like a lot of pixels, a lot of geometry. Um, where do you start from uh, in, in your specific um, function? So first off, we think like, okay, we need a big house that we want that like someone of an important figurehead was living in. So we were nicknaming this the governor's house because we were fans of so Walking Dead. can you Dead. find like eye patches in there and... Uh, no, no, eye patches, sorry. We don't even, <laughs> but that would probably be a good idea. It's like a nice wearable item. Maybe we can do that. Okay. But there will be spawns, you know, item spawns inside of here. And you can come and find them. And, you know, they could be anything. It could be weapons, food, water, whatever it is. Unless somebody else raided it and took everything, you know, then... And is this a wine cellar down here? That yeah, I this is the cellar. So this is a it's it's a three story house, and right now I'm just in the cellar. I propped all this out earlier this morning, just trying to make it look like a place that you know they were storing stuff. Cause, you know, it's just a cellar Got basically. It. And then you know we come through the the mindset behind this is like we want to make this place look very livable. And being as the governor's mansion, maybe he didn't have the the option, or maybe he didn't get invaded as hard as the other citizens of you know the country uh -huh. so his place is not as ruined normally we would go through on a house we were like okay let's make a house look really good and then destroy it so we do stuff like this like okay maybe the, the governor was having dinner here with his family and Child then is distressed. yeah so how long does the typical um a house like this or, or building take to create from start to, to finish now this is one of our largest buildings and this took uh the artists uh, a few weeks to actually create the exterior and the interior because it's very there's a lot of detail to it there's a little, it's complex it's multi floors there's a lot of doorways we got all these railings and windows all that stuff and you try to do it to you know close to real life measurements and whatever you know feels good you know because you don't want to go into a room and it just feels like you walked into a closet right so we we actually blueprinted out this house wow. and uh cool. yeah and we we took two car garage yeah two car garage yep multiple floors and we actually did it like in visio it's like okay this is where you would actually put your living room your dining room, all that stuff. So we. So this is a blueprint. What what would you call that version right there? This version is a proxy. A proxy. Yeah, okay. this is a proxy. There's no textures to it. It's just an exterior version that that an artist built. And now I know you guys um, are extremely concerned about the footprint that the game and especially the assets um, uh, take up the space, right? Tell us a little bit about how you kind of minimize the um, the geometry and whatnot. Well, that's the beauty of the forge engine we build large maps so space isn't as much of a, as a problem for us okay so it's like hey you know let's just make something really big and then we do it so like we if we wanted to make this house even bigger we could have done that and that's what because the, the forge light engine supports it and we you know it's why not you know people like big stuff eventually we'll make things even bigger so is this an asset that um, with different textures or different um, facade on the outside can be reused in different uh, areas of the game? Possibly. Not this one, though. We want to make this house be more unique, but we can do that with our other houses that we're building. So as you can see, like we have one as an example right here. We built this one. Right now it has no interior to it, but it is a facade. That looks spooky. But, yeah, but we do plan to make it where it's like, hey, there is an interior into it. If you find it, maybe you can break in, break down this wood and get inside. And there's a family of zombies in there or something. Right. You know, we want to add like that sense of discovery and, and creepiness to the to the world. So tell me a little bit about barricades and how, uh, what your role in building them will be. So barricades are quite simple, actually. We want to make it to where any entry, entry point to a home can be barricaded up. So like here's a small home we want to make it to where it's like okay i just escaped from a horde of zombies i got a lot of wood i want to 
barricade up all the any point that a zombie can come in. So the doors, windows, and just completely seal up this home. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make it to where there's uh, you don't see them in the, in here or in the game, but there's going to be little points that you can interact with, and you place down a barricade, and it looks like hey, it's a big piece of wood or whatever the bar the artists give us for it. Got it. Okay. Um, what about furniture and placement? Of, I mean, it, how does that take place? It, it seems like a very tedious task. It's actually not too bad. I mean, the, the editor that we have here is very user friendly. So it's, it, you know, once you look at it, it's easy to move around. And then you can obviously place new ones of whatever makes sense to go in there. We have bigger, bigger and smaller assets. This is obviously a small, tight quartered home. So we try to give you some space to actually move around when you're in there. And then this is something that players are going to be able to, uh, you know, move their furniture around and uh, use furniture to block doors if they don't barricade it. Right. Well, we do plan on giving players the ability to build like shelters. I don't know yet if we plan on letting them do something this complex possibly I don't have the answer to that but we do plan on letting them be able to move stuff around so it's like if they put a chest down there and the chest is container they can move that around to a better position our system is pretty flexible and we've done that in previous games like EverQuest and all that it's sure. really simple to do that yeah EverQuest yeah. too especially had a very robust um, housing yeah. ability for placement and items and I know that was super yep. cool what are those green items these green items are places or that items can possibly spawn so all, all of our little desks and, you know, cabinets so water are... water bottles, yeah. pieces of wood, metal, mm -hmm. food, cans of beets. Correct. Okay. And we color code them. Like, this one is green, so this is a, like a residential type of item spawner. So you may find possibly more water or food than if it was inside of a commercial building. Like, a, like I don't know, like a grocery store. Maybe you'll find more food water there, too. So that, those are numbers that we're actually playing around with. But these are just possible locations that an item can spawn. It's not guaranteed that there will be something there because we want to keep items rare, and you have to find them, and you have to... Because that's a whole part of being a, you know, in a survival atmosphere. Cool. Do you want to move that window right there? Because I can read um, some oh, of the questions Oh, sure. From the chat. Sorry. Okay. Uh, will the house go pitch black when it's all barricaded? What when are it's the light barricaded. sources going to be? So I can probably show you something like that now, maybe. And that was a question <laughs> from D Nuck. It doesn't get pitch black, unfortunately, because uh, we we're still working on our lighting solutions for mm -hmm. for the game. And uh, so right now, you know, it just it does get dark though. Everything gets darker than it would if you were inside. Uh, I could block up these windows just Is to show Is there capacity for each house? Like if you had a, a group of people that you were traveling with through H1Z1 and you guys <laughs> came upon this house, I mean, what if you had 100 you know, plus people, would they be able to crowd in here? Depends on how big the room is. The if more you, the merrier? The more the merrier. If you can squeeze all those people in here, they probably won't be able to move, but you know, because there's not much room to move around. So you could have a post-apocalyptic party. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, I've, I imagine in a situation like that, people will start killing each other just because it's, you know, they get frustrated because they can't move. Like, ah, get out of my way. So <laughs> tell us, now that we're talking about light sources, tell us about, I mean, is there electricity, candles? I mean, are these things that people are going to have to craft or find? Something that we do that we were actually talking about the other day is, you know, being able to have generators that you can actually plug into a home and... You know, you fill it up with fuel that you find, and then now you power it up the house for X amount of time, however much fuel it is or how how good condition the generator is. And then, yeah, that, those type of things we're actually, we would like to do in the future. Um, I think must be new. I think I have a, it's, the chat is so small, but um, yeah. are you going to be able to spawn in your house after you die or if you die? We don't know. Oh, right? oh yeah. I'm yeah. Not, I, I don't know the answer to that. That's something um, I know that uh, has come up in discussions before in, in, in terms of what happens after you die. So right. Definitely uh, give us your your thoughts on that. Um, must be new. In the current. Yeah. Delta, <laughs> please tell us what you think about it. Go to Reddit and let us know how you feel on it. Uh, will <laughs> things like cabinets and stove, will, will they be containers? Yes. They are currently containers right now in the state. Oh, I got to phone call <laughs> but anyway. whoever's calling lenny he's on a live stream right now <laughs>
but right now they are searchable. They are containers you can, and you may even find items inside of them. You can find possibly food, water, or, you know, can openers, a lot of whatever items that would actually fit in there. You won't find any rifles or anything like that or shovels, but we can actually control what can, what can be put inside of there. And then players can actually make use of it too. So like, you know, I'm gonna store a bunch of stuff in here you know just you know that way i don't have to carry it around they do that then other players can actually come and steal it from them yeah, yeah so it's something you have to be careful with can you barricade i mean i guess that you can lock your your doors right when you leave your house or is that something that we're kind of up in the air about that's something that's up in the air about as well you know we're talking about it's like hey can you lock it you know you know do you need keys and all that we're, we actually do want you to be able to do stuff like that we're just discussing how we want to do that how do we want to control it yeah. So it's been, uh, H1Z1 is set in uh, anywhere America, anywhere USA, middle America, um, small town USA. Tell us a little bit about um, the inspirations that you guys went after in terms of housing and, uh, you know, will there be big cities eventually? Um, you know, what, what's the goal there? Yeah, so we wanted to keep like to, you know, old southern, but nor actually more like a northwestern, I should say, northwestern style homes, you know, just out in the country. That's where there's not like a whole lot of civilization, but there are people there. So maybe like a population of like a couple hundred thousand people may live in this area or this county, so to speak. But it's all very spread out and it's very rural. And so we were trying to figure out like, hey, well, how, how would these people be living out in here? And so we constructed these assets to actually fit in that type of world. And then as far as cities go, we are keeping, we are making some small town-like cities they're not going to be major metropolises like new york or anything like that but you are going to see like just small areas where hey they built uh commercial districts and they have like some some stores and restaurants and all that stuff but it's not going to be massive right now because we want to keep this area small eventually when we expand the world maybe the world reaches out to a major city like that in the future that's awesome um so we've seen some houses and uh, even a mansion what about <laughs> uh, somebody's not giving up what about prisons and other bigger facilities that maybe would be uh, something that players could search for in order to barricade themselves or, or maybe not barricade but uh, fort up in them I would love to do that and we can actually do that we don't have anything like that right now for me to show you mm -hmm. but that is something that we do plan on doing we got to have a prison you know just because walking dead's got it right and it's just an awesome place to to have you know it's like why would you ever leave that place it's great so we want to do prisons we want to do hospitals you know all the cool creepy atmospheres but awesome places to create a stronghold out of so those type of things you know they're still up in the air where we just and we're going to eventually get to that point where it's like okay what do we make what do we put in you know we want to have military bases eventually so, and underground military bases or is it the cdc yeah the cdc that blew up in what was it season two or three of walking dead so, one of the Some, yeah. it was season one i think was the end of season one right Possibly. no maybe it's the beginning of season two i can't remember season, yeah season totally um no i think that would be exceptionally cool and uh i mean i know if i was a player and i'd probably be banding up with a few people. I'd be yeah. looking for a prison or uh, some sort of uh, cement or brick building with some fortitude right. uh, or around it. So cool. Season one, they're saying season, season one. one. There you go. Yeah. Season one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. yeah. No worries. So uh, speaking of Walking Dead, I'm a total fan of Walking Dead. Uh, what and you are too, obviously. Yes. Um, what are some of your other zombie inspirations like w w uh, movies, um, games, board games? Like what have what have you been looking for for inspiration? Well, I am a fan of like some of the older zombie movies too, like, you know, Dawn of the Dead. I even like the parodies like Shaun of the Dead. It's yeah. just so great, you know, and I am very much a fan of zombie games. Like some of my favorite games out there are the Dead Island games. I like DayZ. I play it all the time. Yeah, I love just bashing in zombie heads. It's fun. Everybody loves that. So it's when I, you know, when I was brought onto this project in January, I was like, yes, I would love this. I really want to make a zombie game. And so... I'm glad I have that opportunity to do this. SOE making dreams come true. <laughs> um, so maybe we can, you can do a couple things in here while I check out the status of uh, where we're at with uh, the other members of the dev team and um, we'll cut to them. Sure. Cool. Thanks guys. Keep asking your questions on Twitch. We're watching. All right.